All right. Live Like a Shark series, episode eight on diving in sharks in the coral triangle. We're a little early, so we're going to wait. Shark Stewards is part of the Earth Island Institute based in Berkeley. Our mission is to save sharks from overfishing in the shark fin trade and protecting critical marine habitat. And we do that through education. Now, through COVID, we're trying to do education via electronic means like this, including our YouTube channel and social media, and use that education and apply it towards conservation and advocacy. So let's save some sharks together. Let's learn together. Let's protect wildlife and let's get out there in nature and get healthy now that this hopefully crisis is easing up and we can actually go back in the field and in the classroom. So thanks for joining me. Uh, I am a diver. I dive and have made films with the California Academy of Sciences, National Geographic. I'm an ocean voyager and I wanna share some of the experiences that I've had actually in the past decade in the Coral Triangle. So on previous episodes, we've talked about sharks, shark diversity, rays, threats to sharks. What else have we talked about? Diving with sharks, the benefits of sharks to ecotourism or ecotourism benefits to sharks both ways. And now we're exploring how we can protect sharks from the shark fin trade through diving and hands-on conservation. So let's go to the Coral Triangle. If you look at your upper right screen, this shows an area that's about one and a half percent of the planet, and yet it has 25% of the marine biodiversity. It's shared by six countries. We will visit the Philippines at the top in that Verde Island passage that you can see at the top of the triangle. Of course, that's Vietnam and uh, Laos, Cambodia, and part of Malaysia up at the top left, that's just on the edge of the Coral Triangle. We work in Malaysia and Borneo, so we'll visit Borneo in this series as well with our friend Bertie Aaron Gakoski, who we hope to have on the show, but he needed to do his own wildlife Zoom last night. And since we were diving yesterday, we didn't have time to develop this show. And then Timor-Leste is down at the very bottom, and we're going to talk about Timor-Leste next week and hope for one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. Uh, over 600 species of reef fish, 500 species of corals, and this, this region of the world is incredible. If you're a diver, it's one of the most beautiful places to dive on the planet, and it's also one of the areas that are most at risk. So I want to go back to 2011 on an expedition to the, with the California Academy of Sciences. I'm going to stop sharing here and I'm going to go to a short clip on the Philippines biodiversity expedition that ended up in the uh, coral reef exhibit at the Academy. Some of the species that are, were collected are in the collections and being described. And then we helped produce, and I filmed most of this uh, that was produced by KGO7 ABC TV. So this is an excerpt from the entire film. ABC7 News presents Reefs to Rainforests, The Great Expedition. Think about this, 90% of all life on Earth has yet to be discovered, and many species may become extinct before we even know they exist. Hello, I'm Dan Ashley at the California Academy of Sciences in Golden Gate Park. You may think of it as a museum, but this remarkable place is so much more. Beyond the exhibits, this is a high-level research center. Academy scientists travel the globe. In fact, they're just back from their biggest expedition ever to one of the world's richest ecosystems, they believe they found as many as 500 new species on this trip and learned a lot more about our wonderful and sometimes strange planet. Come along with us now to the Philippine Islands, reefs to rainforests, the great expedition.
We're going in. Dive after dive, hike after hike. Academy scientists and their Filipino colleagues joined forces for more than a month. The mission to find and to document life of all sizes and shapes on Luzon, the largest of the Philippines' 7,000 islands. There isn't a dive that I've made here where I haven't seen something unexpected and something new. The money for the project was a gift from Margaret and Will Hurst. Scientists now estimate there are close to 9 million species on Earth, but they've only found about 10% of them. A lot of the unknown treasures are believed to be in places like the Philippines. It's got riches in the tropical forests and high mountains all the way down to uh, the coral reefs, which are the richest in the world. Many discoveries were underwater. Colorful sea slugs, a new type of deep water shark. To find a new species is very exciting. But to find a new species in shark, that's a rare event. Trash. The tourist areas are trying to keep the beaches clean, but like most of the world, there is a long way to go. And trash is just the beginning. Here in Metro Manila, it's only 7% sewerage. Uh, so most of Metro Manila's waste really goes into Manila Bay. Some of the locals still fish in Manila Bay, but it's so polluted, Academy scientists are focusing their research on other areas, still full of spectacular biodiversity. But even in the most pristine reefs, something is missing. We only saw two sharks during 1,000 dives. John McCusker is one of the world's top shark experts, and he's worried. John says when he was in the Philippines 30 years ago, things were very different. Every time I'd be in the water, I'd be surrounded by sharks. There were sharks everywhere. I was kind of nervous at first, but I got over it when I realized that those sharks weren't dangerous sharks. John says the disappearance of sharks and other big fish is what's really dangerous especially if they're killed before they have a chance to reproduce. The removal of top-level predators, like the sharks, that are so critical to reef ecology, causes a downward collapsing cascade, a spiral where you have ecosystem collapse. One way researchers figure out which fish are left in the ocean is to see what's for sale in fish markets. This one is in Manila. Do they sell sharks in the market? Do you sell sharks? This, uh, no sharks? No sharks, no. Shark. We didn't see any sharks in the fish market. Not because they don't want to sell them, but the sharks are all gone. They did see this spotted stingray in the market. It was selling for about a dollar a pound. A dive resort operator once told me that those fish might be worth a thousand dollars a pound. But that's if they are alive, so scuba diving tourists can see them. The Academy team also spent a week on a research boat in the deep sea off the Philippines. We haven't seen a single shark at the surface. But far from the surface, they did find more than a dozen small sharks, 1,500 to 3,000 feet deep. And this shark living as deep as it does isn't being caught and killed yet. They're believed to be a new species of swell shark with the ability to change body shape, sometimes sleek and streamlined, sometimes roly-poly, like this one. But that's nothing. When they're in their habitat and they're frightened by a larger predator, they'll swallow enough water to look like a bowling ball with fins on it. These newfound sharks were treated like celebrities by the scientists, excited by discovery, but worried about the worldwide decline. About a decade ago, sharks started to disappear, and disappear by as many as 73 million a year primarily to have their fins cut off to be sold to the Asian community for shark fin soup. Several of the new sharks are being brought back to San Francisco for research, but most were returned gently to the water to spawn a new generation. Researchers hope other sharks will get the same chance. Life in the ocean depends on it. So now we know. Time is of the essence if we intend to protect what is certainly among the most important and diverse ecosystems anywhere on Earth which is why the Academy of Sciences launched the largest expedition in its history. And we were so glad to have taken you along. For all of us at ABC7, I'm Dan Ashley. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.
Okay, that was a lot of fun. That was an excerpt from the film that we helped produce with the California Academy of Sciences and Channel 7 for the, uh, on the 2011 Philippines Marine Biodiversity Expedition. And the team of scientists actually discovered over 600 new species in the Philippines as a result of that expedition, not only with North American scientists, but also with local Philippine researchers with the Natural History Museum, which we partner with. So hi, I figured out how to turn on my video. Uh, I'm David McGuire with Shark Stewards, hi. We're here with our Live Like a Shark series. I'm in San Francisco over day 70 in COVID. Yesterday, we finally went diving at the Farallon Islands. It was so exciting. So I want to give a shout out to my friends at the uh, San Francisco Scuba D Diving Group, Jeff. Hi, everyone, if you're listening. This is part of a talk that I was going to give to you a couple of months ago live. Uh, we do a lot of live speaking to scuba groups and education groups. And since we've been sheltered in place, we're doing it now with this series online that's also on YouTube on the Shark Stewards channel. And you can tell I'm all bundled up. I've got my COVID haircut, kind of the new look. Um, we're bundled up because it's San Francisco in the summer, as Mark Twain said, is the, the coldest winter is the su summer in San Francisco. Uh, it's about 52 or 55 degrees and that foggy breeze is coming in because it's nice and warm inland where people have true summers. So we're here in our shark swag and then we want to remind you that uh, we are a nonprofit relying on grants and donations and these episodes have helped us raise money as well as awareness. Please share. If you'd like to get a mask, we hand paint them. So continue to wear a mask. $20 donation and we'll mail one of these to you. We're making them every night. And remember, live like a shark, swim at a distance, keep your fins clean and always keep smiling. So that's our motto for the past two months. And it's hard to keep smiling, but I'm a lot happier because I got to go diving finally. And we're gonna share some of those experiences in our National Marine Sanctuary, in our Marine Protected Area, uh, diving and documenting and filming. So I wanna go back to our presentation um, here. And we'll pick up where we left off. So we're talking about marine biodiversity and diving the coral triangle. So we're just there at the top and now we're down here at the bottom in Borneo. So Borneo is the third largest island. We've been working in Borneo for, gosh, how long? Since 2015 and working on shark conservation, marine protection, but also education. That's Mount Kinabalu. But Borneo has some of the most biodiverse reefs, but also some among some of the most threatened. Uh, this is the island of Sipadan. A lot of these images are by our friends and media partners at Scuba Zoo, based in Malaysia, in Kota Kinabalu. Uh, this is one of the oldest and most protected areas, and no surprise, it's one of the most biodiverse, as well as one of the most abundant in apex predators. So areas that have been protected over time tend to have a higher biomass in the higher trophic levels. So sharks, jacks, and some of the other large predatory fish, either migratory or reef dwelling, like the white tip reef sharks. I can't see these. Okay, you're not seeing my Yeah, slides. I only see you. You're only seeing me. Oh my gosh, okay. Let me go back to Zoom. Thank you for that. Here I am. Okay. <laughs> Well, we'll cut that out of the YouTube video and it'll look perfect. So if you're just joining us, sorry for that. Hi, I'm David up in your corner with my friend. We're part of the Earth Island Institute and this is episode eight of our Live Like a Shark series. And we're talking about biodiversity in the coral triangle. So I just talked about Borneo, which is the third largest island. It's down there 
around the middle left uh, part, it's shared by Malaysia and Indonesia, and it has some of the most highest biodiversity, not only in the terrestrial environment, but also especially the marine environment. It's also like much of the coral triangle at risk due to overpopulation and heavy extraction from the sea as well as habitat loss. But we're seeing these areas that are protected have this incredibly beautiful richness and abundance of species. Over 600 species of coral live in the coral triangle. Uh, that's some, somewhere around 75 or 76 percent total coral species, which in an area of coral are only represented around one, less than one percent of the whole ocean. So highly, highly uh, concentrated in the coral triangle. 37% uh, of all reef fish, over 3,300 species live in this area. So incredibly rich, incredibly diverse, incredibly weird and beautiful, as well as other vertebrates like sea snakes that are actually air breathers and invertebrates like nudibranchs that are a sea slug. And of course, a beautiful flamboyant cuttlefish that is a cephalopod, incredibly intelligent, has one of the most sophisticated eyes of any animal in the animal kingdom. It has this incredible chromatophoric display where it changes colors according to mood and as well as texture to deter predation and possibly attract mates. And many species of really weird sharks like this zebra shark. And six of the seven sea turtle species, as well as invertebrates like sponges uh, and other marine organisms. So, when an, uh, an area is protected from fishing and damage, you can see this incredible richness, 100% benthic cover, high densities of fish and apex predators, and happy sea turtles. Areas that aren't protected, unfortunately, are losing their wildlife at an alarming rate. We know if you've been listening that sharks are being killed at the rate of around 100 million a year for their fins. Shark skates and rays is possibly as much as 200 or more million a year are getting killed as bycatch, as intentional catch through IUU or illegal, unregulated, unreported catch, or like this shot taken at Timor last day through just sheer poaching. So I wanted to have my friend Aaron Gikoski, that's him there, but he had his own show last night. He's a good friend of mine. So I thought I would show an episode of Borneo from Below that we worked on and helped produce some of this series. Uh, he's the host also of Indonesia from Below as well as Timor-Leste from Below, which we'll share next week and some of the work that we're doing in this country that is a new country, has some of the best coral reefs I've seen, and we have great hope for marine protection that we want to share with you next Friday and on World Oceans Day, June 8th with Mission Blue. Aaron is a wildlife photographer. He's an activist. He's really funny. Uh, we did these programs, we call it Fun Servation. And uh, he did this show that you can watch on Inside Academy. It's on their YouTube show. Uh, YouTube channel. It's a uh, live show. It's led by divers and dive uh, tour operators. And we're all resorting to these <laughs> live programs or online programs instead of being in the field. So Aaron did a presentation on his work in wildlife, including animals as pets, animals uh, in the illegal wildlife trade, animals in zoos, animals in these photography exhibits, uh, for tourists in, in Southeast Asia and these atrocities that are happening to these primarily terrestrial animals. So I wanted to just share a film that Aaron and I did together uh, with Scuba Zoo. And let me go down here to Borneo from below. Actually, this is the wrong one. I'm gonna go back to our time player, no, Google Chrome. Let me sh no, that's not it. This episode is all about one of the most revered, feared, respected, and iconic animals in the ocean. It is, of course, the shark. 
My name is Bertie, and this is Borneo from below. Slap bang in the heart of the Coral Triangle, Borneo plays host to an incredible array of sharks. These waters are home to over a hundred different species, which help bring in nearly one million dollars every year in the form of dive tourism. I'm at Sea Ventures, a converted oil rig turned dive destination, to see shark tourism in full flow. Shark Special, I am joined by Mr. David Maguire of Shark Stewards, and we are off to one of the world's top dive spots to hopefully get up close and personal with some of these incredible animals. So David, why is this such an important area for sharks? Sipadan Island is a marine protected area. It's been protected from fishing for decades. So there are a lot of fish, a lot of large predators, a lot of pelagics. It's also next to deep water and a migratory pathway for pelagic species. So that's why hammerheads, other large sharks like to aggregate here. Right, let's get in the water. We've been here for less than five minutes. We've already seen sharks from the surface. As David mentioned, Sipadan is a pretty special place for sharks. The unique combination of deep water and oceanic currents right next to shallow reef makes this arguably Malaysia's top shark hotspot. <music> Dotted all over the reef and out in the blue, Sipadan's most abundant resident shark is the white tip reef shark. Like all sharks, they pose little or almost no threat to humans. In fact, they're fairly skittish, which makes them a real challenge to photograph. Using these large pectoral fins to provide lift, a powerful tail for propulsion, plus streamlined anatomy and smooth skin to reduce drag, the sharks glide through water almost effortlessly. Occasionally coming in close enough to check us out before disappearing back into the blue. There were so many sharks there at one point. There must have been 20, 30 white tips just circling us and almost too many to fit in frame. And that is why Sipadan is one of the best dive sites in the world. Back on board, I got chatting to one of Sea Ventures' captains to see how dive tourism has affected him. Uh, sebelum saya kerja di Sea Venture, saya memancing. Uh, saya tukar pergi kerja di Sea Venture. So, jadi nelayan ni kadang-kadang ada gaji, uh, ada pendapatan sikit-sikit kadang-kadang ada uh, bukan macam di kerja di Sibinca gaji tetap maintain gaji bulan saya jadi kapten saya bawa pelancong pergi Sipadan pergi Kapalai uh, kasi tengok diorang banyak ikan kerja jadi kapten bagus So if you know where to go, all appears rosy for sharks in Borneo's waters. However, look a little bit closer and a very different story begins to emerge. You'd have to have been living on Mars with your head buried in a deep red crater to not know anything about the shark fin industry, but here's a quick recap anyway. A delicacy in Southeast Asia, but particularly China, shark fin soup is consumed as a symbol of wealth and prestige. The demand for this grisly, nutrient-deficient broth has led to tens of millions of sharks being killed every year.
To learn more about the shark fishing and finning industry, David and I headed down to a local market. Fish markets like these are an all too common sight across Southeast Asia. What we found was fairly shocking. Over the course of their lifetime, a hammerhead would be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars in the form of tourism, but here, dead on a market, it might be worth maybe $20. Yeah. When you're diving at Sipadan, hammerheads are pretty much the most popular fish. Whenever you speak to tourists, they say, right, okay, take me to the hammerheads. And now you see them here, dead on a market. It's a bit of a waste. I think it's important as well, David, to say that it's not a, a, the blame game. We're not actually saying to people don't fish and people are just trying to support their families. Right, I mean, these people are working hard to survive. And it's really the market. The market is driving the incentive to take sharks that normally wouldn't have been killed, uh, particularly the fins. I mean, if there wasn't a demand for shark fin soup, he wouldn't be having juvenile sharks here with their fins cut off. So it's definitely consumer market driven. And people are making money off that. The, the dried seafood traders. They don't care if it's a shark or whatever it is, sea cucumbers. They're making money off of it. So if the consumers are aware that we're overfishing the ocean for something we really don't need, okay. there's not going to be a market and these guys aren't going to be selling the fence because nobody's going to buy them. It's clear that sharks are under threat globally as a direct result of the demand for their fins. Thankfully, here in Sabah, there are people working hard to save shark populations on both a local and global scale. Hi there, my name's Steve Moore. I'm Samantha Sherman. We're here as part of Global Fin Print Project, which aims to use baited remote underwater video cameras or uh, bruvs. So the camera is uh, situated so it looks over our bait arm. At the end of the bait arm, we have a cage that's full of, full of bait. Uh, this will attract animals, which we will then capture on film. See the video. From this we can gather information on abundance of different species uh, as well as what species are using which types of ecosystems. On a local scale one dive operator, Scuba Junkie, runs an annual shark week working with the community to bring shark related issues to a wider audience. For this week? Uh, so for this week it's all basically about raising awareness about the plight of sharks, how important sharks are for the marine ecosystem, um, how it can eventually have a knock-on effect on the people that rely on the oceans here and really just trying to make a difference. With a jam-packed schedule and lots of enthusiastic volunteers, what better way to get a serious message out there than lots of fun activities? From beach cleans to dressing up, interactive presentations to a fair bit of partying. Shark Week is true conservation in action. Now all of the guys, nutters that they are, are swimming the whole way around the island to raise money for shark conservation. Sharks are incredibly important to marine ecosystems. As top predators, it's their role to regulate the rest of the food web, weaning out the sick, the stupid and the slow from their prey populations. Without sharks, the reef ecosystem will collapse one level at a time, causing catastrophic damage to our oceans and all that depend on them. 
Whilst progress is being made here in Borneo, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Now, I know it can be quite a hopeless feeling watching films like this from the comfort of your own home or office. So here are a number of simple suggestions that Borneo from Below would like to make that will help you to save shark populations. Number one, and first and foremost, do not eat shark fin soup. In fact, don't even eat at restaurants that serve it. It's gross and it's pushing sharks towards extinction. Number two, did you know that fish and chip restaurants sell shark in the form of flake and rock salmon? It might rhyme with hake and have the word salmon in it, but let's be clear, these are sharks. Remember to ask more questions about where your seafood comes from, not just here, but in all restaurants. Number three, support sustainable shark tourism. There are plenty of places in the world where there are still lots of sharks. So get out there, get in the water, get diving and spread the word before it's too late. And finally, number four, please share this video with your friends and family and continue to watch our adventures diving with sharks right here on Borneo from Below. There's cat shirts and there's white tips, there's leopard and there's grey reef, there's hammerheads and there's black tips, the Borneo shark family. Okay, so you can see why we call it fun Fun-Servation. That was Bertie, my friend, who lives in Bali now and is working in documenting and exposing, in a more serious manner, this pet trade, uh, this tourism trade, and uh, illegal wildlife trade to protect species, not only sharks, but animals like pangolins, uh, orangutan, elephants. So I encourage you to go check out his channel. So if you're just tuning in, we just watched one of the Borneo from Below series produced by Scuba Zoo. Uh, the most recent series is Timor Leste from Below, which we'll share next week, next Friday. And we'll talk more about working and Aaron and I working together uh, this fall on uh, protecting biodiversity and actually mapping sharks using the brubs, as you sh saw that we worked with the uh, Australia Institute of Marine Sciences in Borneo. We're trying to do the same thing in Timor-Leste. So let me see, I just wanna go back to our talk and thanks for joining us. If you are uh, just joining us or if you're listening, or if you have been listening, these are also going on YouTube on our Shark Stewards channel. Uh, so this is number eight. Previous episodes have been on biodiversity, shark diversity, shark speciation, phylogeny, taxonomy, and threats to sharks. So that was Bertie and uh, doing our fun conservation series with Scuba Zoo. So Bertie started to talk a little bit about uh, some of the threats. And in his episode last night, which was why we couldn't have him live, he's talking about these global threats that are facing not only aquatic marine species, but terrestrial species worldwide. We are in the age of the Anthropocene, the sixth largest extinction event of the planet. Uh, the last one was in the Pliocene and uh, about a third of shark population, sharks actually went extinct in the last episode. Many flourished and continued to speciate uh, but now sharks are threatened globally. Boris Worm, a scientist, estimated that 90% of large fish are gone from the oceans, and that includes many, many species of large sharks. Speaking about biodiversity and the expedition with the California Academy of Sciences, it's estimated that there are around 9 million species survived, uh, it described about 9 million species have been described by scientists over time. So that includes a lot of plants and a lot of insects and not as many sharks, of course. Uh, further estimates are that's 10% of all the species out there. 
So the, the tip of the iceberg, one expedition with 100 scientists spending a month in the field, intensively working, describing 600 species, uh, that's just a scratch. And with all of these species that are out there to be described, including sharks, we're losing them faster than we can even name them. It's estimated that 30,000 species go extinct every year by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. And most of those have been lost in the last 40 or 50 years, thanks to industrialization and habitat loss, but essentially linked to human population increase, the demand for food, but also for luxuries and diversions. A study that just came out in science last year looked at the loss of marine megafauna trends and potential threats if these trends continue. So sharks, marine mammals, large fishes, and sea turtles are all on the decline or threatened. Species losses within the next 100 years could be as much as 18% with a loss of habitat affecting other species, including humans, of up to 11%. This is the best case scenario, but disproportionately affecting sharks. So of those 18% species lost, 20% of those would be sharks and 44% of the habitat associated with sharks. In a worst case, if you looked at all the animals that were vulnerable or threatened with extinction, which makes up at least 25% of sharks, 40% species loss could be experienced. 62% of those would be sharks. So 48% of habitat loss, 48% to 82% of shark habitat loss in the ocean. We rely on these oceans for our air, we rely on for our fish, for food, we rely on for our rec uh, recreation. $12 billion in diving in the value is a value to the Coral Triangle. So diving, uh, all the associated activities, business activities that support tourism worth far more than fishing, four to five times more at least. So it's worth more to keep these animals alive and allow these industries to flourish and endure with the lives of these animals. There is hope, we are on, a, on the crux. We're losing species, especially beautiful, charismatic species. People don't tend, tend not to care about blue sharks. They're way out there most of the time. They live along the margins of continents, highly migratory, pan-global. We were estimated at the most abundant shark in the ocean. And now they're getting killed at the rate of 20 million a year for shark fin soup. And they're disappearing off our coastline here in California because of this long line industries for tuna as bycatch, but also as in the shark fin trade. And it's unnecessary. We don't need to eat the big fish. We need to protect the, the big fish. And we do that by protecting their habitat, and also implementing regulations to permanently protect areas, under marine protected areas, no fishing zones, and create these areas of hope, such as this place in Timor-Leste we'll talk about next week, announcing a new hope spot with Mission Blue. And combating the shark fin trade. So we're working here in the US. We have 13 different US states once travel opens up, we'll go back to China, we'll go back to Indonesia, we'll go back to Timor-Leste to try to intervene and interdict the shark fin that are being either, the sharks that are either being killed or their fins are being traded legally, but irresponsibly or with, that are species that are supposed to be protected like hammerhead sharks. So I wanna leave a message of hope with the youth. World Oceans Day is coming up on June 8th. That's the whole ocean. That's not just California. That's 71% of the planet. And we're trying to connect with people across the Pacific, across the Atlantic, across the globe to recognize we rely on the ocean for our livelihood, for our future, as well as this 48% species of sharks 
84% of their habitat that not only sharks rely on, but we rely on. So as we wrap up this episode, there are Live Like a Shark, I want to, to thank our friends in Shenzhen, in Hong Kong, in Singapore, in Indonesia, who are going diving, who are supporting conservation, who are picking up trash and respecting sharks. So I'm, I encourage you all to dive in and sa save a shark. If you don't dive, go out and pick up a piece of plastic, support our work at Earth Island Institute, Shark Stewards, and live like a shark. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Get out there in the ocean like we are. We just went diving for the first time in months and have a new adventure to share this summer on diving the Farallons, protecting beautiful species like white sharks, but also beautiful threatened species like soup fin and blue sharks that swim off of our coastline. I want to thank all the volunteers, my board, who's been very supportive. Thanks for watching. Please share. Thanks to the San Francisco Scuba Diving Group. And thanks to all of my sponsors and grantees. So live like a shark. Stay safe. See you next week. And donate if you can and get a mask. Follow us on YouTube at sharkstewards.org. And we'll see you for episode nine, celebrating a new hope spot. I'm David McGuire with Shark Stewards, signing out. Thanks for watching.